he's leading among declared Democrat candidates. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Bernie Sanders. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I am a millionaire. Well, actually, this year we had $560,000 in income. And that's a lot of money. And that money, in my case, in my wife's case, it came from a book that I wrote. Pretty good book. You might want to read it. <laughs> it's a bestseller. It sold all over the world, and we made money. So if anyone thinks that I should apologize for writing a best-selling book, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it. But your marginal tax rate, tax rate was 26% because of President yeah. Trump's tax cuts. So why not say, you know, I'm leading this revolution. I'm not going to take those. Come on, but there he, I am, I paid the taxes that I owe. And by the way, why don't you got Donald Trump up here and ask him how much he pays in taxes. Yeah. Hey, President Trump, my wife and I just released 10 years. Please do the same. Let the American people know how much we And you know, not everybody thought that I should come on this show. And we appreciate it. All right. Your network does not necessarily have a great deal of respect in my world, but I thought it was important for me to be here and have a serious discussion about serious issues. Democratic socialism, to me, is creating a government and an economy and a society which works for all rather than just the top 1%. It means ending the absurd inequalities that exist today. And I want to lay this out, because you're not going to hear this much on Fox, and you're not going to hear this much in the media in general. And the American people have got to conclude whether we think it is appropriate and what America is about to have three families owning more wealth than the bottom half of the American society, 160 million people, whether it's appropriate for the top 1% to own more wealth than the bottom 92%. I believe that human beings, especially in a wealthy, democratic, civilized society like our own, are entitled to certain basic rights. So let me be very clear, and I'm sure we'll discuss it later in the show, Brett. I believe that health care is a human right, not a privilege. Okay? And I believe, I believe that there is something embarrassingly wrong when the United States of America is the only major country on Earth not to guarantee health care to all people. I live 50 We're, miles from the Canadian border. We're going to get in okay. detail about Medicare. Right. And so health care is right. I believe that education, whether you're poor, whether you're rich, you have the right to get all of the education you need. And that is why I believe we should make public colleges and universities tuition free. One. It's going to be free at the point of when you use it. Okay? In you go to... Why are you so shocked by this? Because someone's this is gonna pay. Go somebody is gonna <laughs> Who pay. Who are they? Who okay, pays? okay, one, one second. Okay, Relax. I'm just we'll be talking. Please. We'll get through this it's together. It's a common question. Okay. We had, okay. All we right, had here we so go. many email questions. Okay. Ask Senator Sanders how he is fair going enough. to pay. Fair enough, I got it. It's a fair but question. But the first thing, let's just say hypothetically. Okay. You're, uh, you are um, self employed and you have, you've got a husband and two kids, okay? Family of four. Do you know how much that family is paying today for health care? Tell me. $28,000 a year. Okay. All right, we're spending $11,000 per person. We are saying to that family of four, you ain't going to pay that $28,000. You're not paying any more premiums. You're not paying any more co-payments. You're not paying any more deductibles. How's that? $28,000 you're not paying. But does that mean you're not going to pay something? Of course it does. You're going to pay more in taxes. Whether you're a conservative or a moderate or a progressive, I don't think the American people are proud uh, that we have a president who is a pathological liar. In the last time around, the 2016, Secretary Clinton had 500 superdelegates lined up behind her before the first vote was cast in Iowa. And that seemed to me pretty dumb and unfair. Well, that process has been changed. And I think that works well for everybody. And that is what we want to hear from is not political insiders and campaign contributors. You want to hear from ordinary people in Iowa and Pennsylvania. And they should determine who the next Democratic nominee will be. Let's talk about immigration, yeah. which is a real issue. Okay. Everybody First like of all, instead of demonizing immigrants, Nobody maybe, well, I'm saying you are, but we have a president who certainly does every single day. What we need is comprehensive immigration That's reform. That's what the American people want. And if we had American a president who believed in that, we could actually do it. 
What you also want to do... Both, you know, you both got, parties need to agree on it. You to got today one point, you know, Trump ended the DACA program that Obama established. You know what that means? That means every day more and more young people who were raised in the United States from two or three years of age, they're in the military. They are teachers. They're working all over this country. They are now scared to death that somebody's going to pick them up and throw them out of the country. And that is what Trump did. We need to provide legal status to those people. And we need a humane... Look, Martha, I'm not saying this is an easy issue, right. but let's not politicize it. What we need, as I said, we need the proper uh, legal processes at the border so that these issues can be adjudicated to determine whether or not people should be entitled to asylum. The main point is that if we do not combat climate change, I, I fear very much the kind of world that we're leaving to our kids in terms of more drought, more flooding, more extreme weather disturbances, more rising ocean levels. And when those things happen, by the way, they become a national security issue because people migrate. If I can't, you know, if I'm living in the Mideast someplace and I can't grow food... Thank you all very much. Thank you, Senator Sanders.